for people listening, maybe who know nothing about water or who are debating getting into the water filtration or what are some of the things that, you know, if you could just boil it down to three things, that, whether they're either myths that you want to debunk or some things that people should really pay attention to in their water source. I just want to share something with them that, you know, any novice can understand. There is a lot of misinformation out there. There are a lot of articles written by people that have no credentials, no background, no expertise whatsoever. You had kind of alluded to fluoride, for example. I mean, there's some crazy right. stuff out there for fluoride, like, you know, saying it's how the U.S. is, like, disposing of chemical weapons. And as someone who actually worked in the chemical weapons field, I can tell you unequivocally <laughs> that that is not, that's just not true. Um, sure. The other kind of takeaway from this, and you alluded to this earlier as well, is the role of EPA. So there are contaminants, and like you said, the EPA sets a base level standard for what is considered safe and legal. By definition, municipalities say that their water is safe if it complies with the Safe Drinking Water Act. Now, there are a number of contaminants that are known carcinogens that are not regulated. So when a municipality says we're in, we're completely in compliance with, with all of EPA's regulations, a lot of times we counter with, well, you can't be out of compliance for something that's not regulated. So, right. you know, for example, like there hasn't, there's been hardly any contaminants added to the regulated list in the past 30 years, um, even though we've known of new things popping up and, you know, sometimes the state's take the initiative to protect against those things. Other times they don't. So it's, it's, it's just a very complicated thing. So we really, really recommend talk to someone that knows what they're talking about. Someone who's, who lives and breathes this stuff. Cause you know, 99% of the stuff on the internet is total trash. Yeah. I, I just go back to like Aaron Brockovich, right? So the movie that, that whole thing is about chromium six. Chromium six is still not regulated despite okay. a Hollywood blockbuster film with Julia Roberts, chromium six is still not regulated by the EPA. Period. So this is interesting. So, in do you think it will be at some point, or no? Why do you think that is? Is it just impossible? Is it? Are they basically just like, look, at this point, it's in everybody's water anyway, and so we're just going to be liable for lawsuits? Like, what, what what's the thought process? Yeah. So, if yeah. EPA places a mandate on states and municipalities to make something regulate to to have a regulated contaminant. The states and the municipalities are on the hook for hitting that standard. Now, think about the water usage in your home. You flush toilets, you wash your laundry, you might water your lawn. You know, at the levels that these contaminants are found, that's totally fine to shower in it. It's totally fine to flush your toilet with it. You just don't want to put it in your mouth, right? Or like over long periods of time, you don't want to put it in your mouth. So there's really no driving force, you know, municipalities don't want tighter regulations because then they have to comply with them. And that means they have to go to their tax base and no politician of any, no elected official, no matter what political party they're in, no one wants to go to their tax base and say, we're raising your taxes. And honestly, it doesn't really make sense to like, you know, if you look at arsenic, for example, it's something we talked about earlier. EPA's regulated limit right now is 10 parts per billion for arsenic. Now, on all of their disclosures, they say that that standard is established by balancing the cost to remove it at the municipal level with the health impacts. So it's a balancing act, right? Now, we would argue that you should have a different standard for the water that goes into your mouth than the water that you flush down your toilet. I don't think that's too profound, yeah. but the way that the EPA is written right now is every drop that enters the home that's on a municipal tap needs to hit a certain standard. So you can either make it a bar that no one can achieve, or you make it, you know, you balance the cost versus the risk. And that's what EPA does. That makes a lot of sense. And it's also unfortunate, but at least I can understand the logic. I was looking at, to, to go back to the LA water, uh, right now in LA, the, I think it's 1.1 parts per billion of chromium six presently. And so it's like, oh, wow. It's like, they literally tell you, they show you, here it is, it's there. Just to go to the other side of, of that. So if the EPA isn't going to do anything and companies like you are helping, is there any science to suggest 
any level of chromium six or a particular level of chromium six is, is not ideal for the human being. We're not in the business of scaring people and trying to like make them scared of their water. That's not what we do at all. But what I will say is the state of California um, did this giant uh, cancer risk assessment for contaminants in drinking water. One of the contaminants that they evaluated was chromium six. Now you mentioned that LA, I think the number you said was one part per billion thereabouts, which is 1000 parts per trillion, correct? So when the state of California went in and looked at what level of chromium six has a negligible impact on cancer, they came back with 20 parts per trillion for that number. Now, again, like their standard for the cancer study was negligible impact, which sure. 20 parts per trillion is just not economically attainable for a municipality like LA for every drop of water that they produce. What we argue at Hydrovive Vive is the water that goes in your mouth should be as close to those like cancer risk studies as possible. You can prioritize that water. Wow. I mean, that's powerful. I mean, that, that's for sure powerful. Again, we, I just want to reiterate, we're not trying to get people scared of their water here. And these are things that, you know, when they looked at these toxicological studies, you know, they, they looked at really long-term impacts and things like that. So it's kind of chronic. Like it, it's not like if you drink it, you're going to get cancer. It increases your risk if you do it over a long period of time. You know, again, we're not trying to get people to be scared of drinking their water. I mean, that's just, that's not the business we're in. Other companies do that, we do not. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.